Every fisherman has a special place in their hearts, where their journey into the world of fishing first began. For me, that special place is not a picturesque farm pond or a serene lake straight out of a Robert Frost poem. Instead, it is nestled in the western Loudoun County, on the very edge of Northern Virginia. The lake is only 100 acres and came into existence in 1963 to facilitate irrigation for Colonel Frank Sleater's expansive orchards. Eventually, the land surrounding the lake was acquired by a developer, and the orchards and all the trees were cut down and replaced with a massive urban sprawl. This place is where so many childhood memories of mine were made. So when Northern Virginia Kayak Association, for their upcoming Battle of Five Lakes tournament, said that Sleater's Lake would be one of the waters that you could pick from, I knew what I was doing this weekend. As I pull up to Sleater's Lake, it's absolutely packed. The first area I really wanted to go to was on the main lake, but there was a couple of kayaks and John boats on it by the time I launched in the morning. So I had to kind of make a little bit of a pivot, but I still wanted to fish those areas. So I went into the back of this cove where my brother and I found some old stumps back when we were kids. I, I pitch out a little ribbon tail worm with a chartreuse tail. First keeper in the boat, awesome. Calm down my nerves. I remember like, dude, this is the lake that you grew up on. You're gonna be fine, you're gonna catch them here. There's still people on this main area I really wanna fish. So what I do is I pedal to this other strip where there's this beautiful grass line that dropped off in some deep water. And then I tied on my old trusty Sleater's Lake swim jig. Um, and then this is to where in the story, things get a little crazy. By the time I get tight on it and I set the hook, it's about a three and a half pounder that actually ate the jig, I think on the fall, but kept coming towards me. And then he jumps at the boat and spits out. I keep fishing down this line though of vegetation, keep throwing my jig and I turn the corner and I find out, okay, the main area on the main stem of the lake, it's open, nobody's on it, cool. So I start working my way through there onto this, onto this hump basically. Fire out my jig again, just working the edge, all of a sudden, So now I've lost two, one that's three pounds, and I'm feeling great. I mean, hopes are high here for the rest of the day. But I did figure one thing out. Both fish, I was sitting down in the kayak when I was trying to set the hook. And so what I decided to do is like, all right, listen, Tom, you're gonna stand up from now on every time you make a cast, just to make sure you can get your whole body into, into the hook set. So keep fishing this hump, all of a sudden thunk, So now I'm feeling a little bit better. I missed a really good one today, but I'm not gonna let that bother me. And the nice thing about Sleater's Lake and lakes like this that have a lot of vegetation, they will stack in them. And so wherever you catch them, that is the generic area they're gonna be in. And once you got that dialed in for that day, you can go back into those same areas and re-catch them because they will generally, they'll, they'll refill. What I do is I just make a loop around this thing and just kind of let that area settle. I go back through there again, same angle. Now we got three in the boat. Feeling a little bit better, but the day's getting away, but they're not big. They're not, the, they're not the size that I know what this lake is actually capable of producing. I know now that there's a really key clump of grass somewhere on this, somewhere on this uh, hump that they're stacking because every single time I've made a pass, I've caught one. So I have that in the back of my mind. I go down another stretch of bank real quick to let this place heal. I try a couple of other baits, but I don't really feel like it's connecting. And I lost a really good one at the beginning of the day on the swim jig. I know the swim jig's gonna play here. No one else is throwing that thing. So what I decided to do, I think there might be some better grass up near seven because I'm not seeing the milfoil that I'm really used to, that I used to see when I was growing up. Um, there's this really stringy grass in there, which is still good, but it's not the milfoil that I, I was used to. So I was like, okay, but that's a heck of a paddle for me and I'm not in really great shape. So that's gonna take the rest of the day to get up there. So I'm like, let's make, it, let's make another pass through that hump one more time. Make the pass through there again. 
So now we got four in the boat. Not the best size, but I'm feeling a lot better. And what was crazy through this whole day, there was a bunch of people actually catching a bunch of fish around me. The reason this 100 acre lake is able to hold the amount of fish it does, and the reason it's able to compete with a lake like Aquaquan Reservoir is because of the aquatic vegetation. John Odenkirk of the Department of Wildlife Resources was on our show last year, and he talked about the importance of subaquatic vegetation. There was something interesting happened. I've worked that stretch of river now for over 30 years. There was never any grass, but right about the time we started seeing all that grass in the main stem, um, you know, we were trying to quantify it, so I can't tell you how much grass, but I can tell you in, in 30 years, it's the first grass I ever saw. Well, not only did you see snakehead numbers go up, but bass numbers going up and bowfin numbers went up significantly. And as long as we have all this aquatic vegetation in here, this lake will be something that people can enjoy for years to come. Now let's get into today's juice. Key to this tournament is a finesse jig setup. What I'm using here is I'm using 15 to 16 pound fluorocarbon on a medium heavy rod with an extra fast tip. And what I wanna do with my swim jig is I want it to be just light enough that it'll get down the water and get into the water column I want it in, but it's not going to dig into the grass. I was using a dirty jig swim jig. I was using the 5 6 which was my heavier swim jig. This is the bluegill color one. And then I go with a rage crawl and I dye the tips of the tails. I knew to dye the tips of the tails because this is a pure bluegill lake. This doesn't have the same blueback or shad forage species that you'd see at maybe Aquaquan or Lake Frederick. This is, there are pretty much bluegill eaters here. And so going with those, those dyed tips are extremely important. That was really the key to success here. So now we start the big paddle and I'm paddling my butt all the way up there. And I turn the lip and you look in that pocket and it is it is God's gift to the world. It is a postcard. It is lush aquatic vegetation. But there is a ton of kayaks and I think one or two John boats up there. But the thing is, and this is why I found out with a lot of grass fishermen, they're in the back as shallow as humanly possible fishing there. So what I did is I kept my kayak off as deep as I thought possible. I chucked my jig out there, then I started reeling it back in. And then all of a sudden, It is a nice one. I think this one is like 15 inches. It's a different caliber of fish. 100% like, okay, the bigger ones are in this section here. Now I pivot to another section. I cast out and this thing comes to me for a split second and just lets go of it. There's another one that's about three and a half pounds. And I think it's because when I'm sitting down, I just do not have the leverage with the setup that I have right now. Lessons learned, a little, little upset. I got my five though and I got a decent one but I know there's some bigger ones in here. What I do is I work out to another part of the edge, fire it out there, and I just let the thing just completely pendulum down. And all of a sudden the line goes slack and I set the hook back and oh my God. All of a sudden he's wrapped me up in a lot of this deep vegetation. I am on my finesse jig setup and you can start hearing the line starting to buckle. The grass is literally holding the hook in. It's actually creating a fulcrum point like that. And somehow that fish never swam up to the mat. He kept swimming away, which helped because I kept the hook tight into his mouth. If he actually kind of just gave it slack, it probably would have dropped right out. I grab a huge clump of it, throw it away. At that point, I had the ability to pull back on him. I was able to scoop him into the net. What a fish a 19 inch beauty. This is what I remember Sluters like it used to be. I have about 76 inches total and I have that 19 inch kicker. As I'm going down the road, I get a call from Mike who runs Northern Virginia Kayak Association. He's like, Tom, you're not gonna believe it. You just got fourth place and you got big fish on the day. A 19 incher, it beat out Aquaquan Reservoir, it beat out Burke Lake, Lake Frederick. It is a fantastic gym. And I was really glad today I was able to help show it with you guys. Again, please like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you want me to do with Hidden Gems on next time.